it's Toshiba here with the Joyful Warrior. Just getting on to say a few things about our new middle school history curriculum. And so if you're interested in videos like that, stay tuned. So as I was saying, um, I don't know if you guys know the story about my eldest, he's 11. We tried a hybrid homeschool for the first quarter of the year and it did not go as expected. Um, we were thinking, if you don't know uh, more about our story, just go back and watch a couple of other videos so you can kind of see Dave's journey throughout homeschooling um, over the last three years. And so um, we just started to do our regular language, our regular, um, we had to change almost everything. So we went back to the drawing board on math, language, every subject. But history was painting him because he really loved history before and we used Becca before we even used sunlight for a small portion at the time but anyway um not grass was not on the radar and so i actually have never done this maybe twice actually this is the second time that i've done this i reached out to the company i've heard people say this and i've never done it because i don't think i have this huge following of of people you know maybe maybe like 1600 people on instagram that are like I don't know, maybe a thousand of those are true followers, and I probably have half that on YouTube. However, I was thinking, I saw the American history being promoted in the fall, and we already had our American history, and I was like, I hear so many good things about Knotgrass. Why hasn't it ever been on the radar? You know, for the past three years, I've tried almost everything, right? And so, then I reached out to the company, I filled out the paperwork, even still like ugh, with angst, like what if this doesn't work and then I have to give an honest review. But I um, downloaded three, was it three chapters? I don't know, I think it's a free download. And we did it for a week and I was like, oh my God, let's not be like the homeschool, have all the things mom, but he really likes it. Of course, Mikey really likes it until he doesn't, right? So we've been using this now for nine lessons. And let me tell you, if he asks to do this first before doing other subjects, just saying, that doesn't happen very often, and so I'll show you. So when I reached out to them, um, I didn't know what they were gonna send because I was perfectly willing to buy it, but I, do, I did want to do a review of something that I tried for longer than a week or two and then give a review saying, oh, we love it, and then turns out we don't love it, or we do love it, but it doesn't work out for that child. And so this is actually Adam to Us curriculum package, and here's what I got. And I'm so excited because it's been nine weeks and uh, not nine weeks. I take that back. It's been nine lessons. So we've been using it consecutively for three weeks and, and you'll understand why in a second. So this is, sorry about the glare. This is the first book and this is the child's, um, everything is included in here, which is great. I love an open and go. Um, that's the first part. And then this is part two. And honestly, when I Googled, not Googled, when I YouTubed, um, cause I'm infamous for watching videos on things, I didn't see a whole bunch of this being um, promoted on other people's. So I just, that was the main reason that I wanted to review it because I don't see many videos like other brands. You see so many people reviewing it and saying good or bad things. I didn't see any, I think I might've found one. And I got to, I, I asked her about it, but she didn't get a chance to reply before I reached out to them. Um, the next one is Our Creative World. And then there is the timeline booklet. Um, then there was obviously the answer key because mama didn't always read with him. There is also a map book that he really enjoys. And then there are the lesson reviews, which is where the question, five questions a day come from. And then there are the student um, workbook pages, which are the fun exercises. And so just to give you a little bit of background, um, Knotgrass is a Christian um, publisher, and so you're going to be getting a Christian worldview or a biblical worldview, I should say, of history. So it's, I would say I have followers who are Christian and secular, and I love them all. However, if you are not looking to have Jesus as the center or God as the center of your history, this is probably not going to be for you. But if you're like, you know, most of the tribe that I follow, this is gonna be exactly what you want. This is also following a Charlotte Mason styled. It also, I think it's a part of the delectable smorgasbord of things as I like to say, because it it is a couple of things that it is that a few Charlotte Mason programs that I've tried isn't, is that it's open and go. And so a lot of times there comes, I'm a nerd and I love to read, but sometimes I'm reading myself into fear where I'm reading so much about the information that I can't utilize it properly, if, if that makes sense with when it comes to, you could so 
from Adam to Us is the name of it, and it came with all those goodies. And I even was tempted to order, they even have it on MP3, where you can listen to the chapters being read. The chapters are no more than four or five pages a day if you want to do it that way, but we're not doing it like that. So I want to just give you a peek into what it's like. And they have perfect, sorry, that was my cell phone. They have perfect samples on their website, so you can go and look. And so this is what it looks like, the table of contents. Hopefully you can see that or just pause it so you can take a look. And it starts with in the beginning, unit one, unit two is a fresh start for mankind, the fertile crescent and beyond, civilizations across the globe, and so on and so forth. I'll show you this spread of it so I'm not redundant in reading things to you. And so there are 15 units in here and I believe there's 15 units in the second book, but I'll show you in a second. There is an introduction. This introduction is to the student and my sixth grader is able to read this on his own. I neglected to say that this is geared to, I think, fifth to eighth grade. And if my son was in fifth grade, he could have totally done this. Um, then there's a little note to the parent right here. So most of it was today. Um, then there is one of these. Who doesn't love this? A how to use this curriculum. And from Adam to us, it says it's a one year world history and literature course designed for students in grades five through eight. I just said that. And there are daily lessons written in narrative style and richly illustrated. I'll get to that in a second. Um, so it's going to go over these major events from a biblical worldview. Um, all of the instructions for what to do each week and each day are included in the main lesson of the text. So here is this, I won't read this, but again, you can go and print this very thing. I didn't print ours, I only printed the work part of it, but what I did was put it on our iPad and save it. Um, you know, we can temporarily save things. It gives everything, guys. I'm showing you the things that you can get from the website. So if I were you watching this video, I put it on pause, go to their website, pull it up on like your phone or an iPad, and then watch this along with. So from Adam to Us Literature Package, you can order or you can get it yourself. We actually didn't order this because we already had the Golden Goblet that we checked out from the library. So the first one is the Golden Goblet. It goes through Aesop's Fables, and there's like three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Um, selections of literature that they've chosen that are very popular. You've probably seen them on Sunlight and even on others, other curricula. These are very popular, very well-written literature books and guides. And they even give you questions to ask. So you don't like, at first I was thinking, oh, he's gonna read the book and then how am I gonna ask him questions if I don't read it? Then I have to go to a separate place like Pinterest and you know, follow the rabbit trail and I don't wanna do that. But it talks about the literature. It's actually optional. You don't have to do it if it's too overwhelming for your child. So again, that, there's so many different elements to this that you can use. It tells you how to use it. It's done on a daily basis, but again, because I was easing Dave back into one of the subjects he really loves, I didn't know how much of this he'd be able to do. Knowing that there is reading assignments, which is first, there's also some separate reading assignments, and they're not every day, maybe twice a week, from our creative world that gives him a little more insight into like he had to read something about the Hittites and about Babylon. That was a separate reading. And I'll give you an idea of what those stories can look like. So here, so one day it would be read this selection in comparison to what was written in the book, if that makes sense. Like he read this one, the Chronicle of the Reign of Sargon. And so it gave him a little bit more in depth and insight to what this historical, these historical points we're talking about. It is, I should say, a gentle approach to history. There are not a whole bunch of dates that they need to have memorized. These are just kind of giving them, I would say, a summation of what happened. Um, which is differing significantly from BJU, who gives, you know, 10, I would say minimally, 25 to 30 questions every single lesson about something, kind of grilling it into their head of what happened during this time. Not that that's anything's wrong with that for a student who needs that type of understanding, but my son isn't that way. His processing needs to happen naturally, so he loves reading these things as a story. Anyway, I'll give you... So look at this. Again, these are things that you can get on their website and have printed. But I love that. It has how to use the timeline book, how to use a student workbook, how to use the lesson review. And there's just one paragraph about that. It talks about the parental supervision. There's actually family activities that you can do that are projects. So multi-sensory, not just one or two types of learning styles. There are multiple learning styles. And he's definitely a tactile type of child. Most of my children are. And um, how much time you should spend completing each lesson so that if he gets frustrated, if it takes longer than 45 minutes, then that's too long and I just cut him off wherever he is. But 45 minutes is a pretty good time for a middle schooler, right? What supplies may be needed? How many assignments should the student complete? And so of course, 
if you've been here at any time, you know that I'm nerd. I want him to do them all. However, that's just not how his personality is. And so here's what those beautiful illustrations that I was telling you about. So that's just first in the beginning. And it starts from the beginning. And I will just tell you, it is the most beautiful book in terms of history. Because sometimes history books are boring. And so it's talking about the beginning of beginnings, like in Genesis with Adam and Eve and that the Bible, we use a lot of master books products, but one of the common themes is that the Bible is the history book of the universe. And so this goes along perfectly with our Bible that we're using. Uh, we're using Bible curricula from master books and nothing is, you know, overarching or overreaching. Nothing is um, contradictory, if that makes any sense. So the beginning of it is mostly about the Bible. But then they talk about the first people and how God designed us to be intellectual beings from the start, even pre-language. For some civilizations at the beginning, they always communicated with God. And so I just want you to see how beautiful this is. It's really um, my son who loves art and loves to see beautiful photography. Sometimes he's just looking at the pictures. And so here's an example of an assignment for lesson five that we've already completed. It says, Our Creative World. So he would read only page three from Our Creative World, which only takes him less than five minutes to read usually. And there's even a map assignment in Lessons 5. And also a student workbook or a lesson review. So you don't have to do both. But if one of them is too fun, <laughs> according to mommy's standards, then I'll have him do the other. There's even creative writing exercises. So I don't have to have a separate, liter a, a separate writing curriculum, even though we already had one. He's finding that he likes doing these a lot better and then the family activity. So this would be one of the weeks where everything was given, but we don't have to complete all of these. And so sometimes if I notice that a lesson, so I'll give you an example. So lesson five was on page three. So on page three, I remember he read this. It was an ancient Hawaiian poem. And I, I actually, I'm sorry. I had to read this to him because the way that the prose was written, it... It was a lot of Hawaiian words, and I'm not Hawaiian or Pacific Islander. I couldn't understand him, but there was some rhyme to it, so I had to read it in a way that he would understand it and then explain why this was given as in conjunction with this, what he read. And then um, also on this same day, I'll show you the books. There was either a page from the student workbook, and I'll give you an idea. We haven't written into these yet because I kept waiting to do um the introduction so this was what lesson five was so this would be a fun exercise for me and um so when he did this one i was like okay you can't just do this but on a day that he kept history for last because sometimes i make him keep the good things last new zealand and um if he keeps the, the fun things at the very end and i think he needs to do some other stuff then of course you can see lesson five there are always five questions in there questions that only one less than that maybe two might have a, an opinion but most of them come directly from the text and i want him to go in there as a middle schooler and write verbatim what it says even sometimes it'll tell them what page to look on and describe it i make sure that he has descriptive words the whole nine this is like homeschool in a box right also creative writing so on two to three sheets of paper i'm sorry write two or three paragraphs describing some of the wonders that god made so this is more of an introspective thing of how he feels that um how this world was created by God and what's the be you know for me it would be beauty and majesty and that stuff but for him it's always like it's architecture he's like man God is so smart that he thought of this so anyway this is just kind of an introduction just to show you how many books and you know what it's not overwhelming the other thing that he has if I can find his backpack is right here I make him keep all the stuff in the backpack this may not be it I don't think it is so another time in there, you saw that this is actually a science one, but he has a notebook similar to this one. And inside the notebook, if he has on other days, you will see five, never more than five or six vocabulary words that some days he has to write the definition and other days he has to write what he thinks those words mean in context. And I appreciate that. So not just, you know, the run of the mill middle school. When I was in middle school, like most of us, there was a lot of definition writing. There was a lot of vocabulary text. And so with this, I, he gets to feel what it's like to be in school because in middle school, it's a lot of what we did. Even when I taught high school science, we did a lot of vocabulary. That's just what science involved. Well, this time he's able to take, synthesize that and put what he thinks the word meant. And sometimes I make him go back and read. It never takes him more than 10 minutes to read it. So I said at the beginning, there's an MP3 
that comes that you can purchase that will allow him to listen to it. Um, there's an MP3 where he can listen to it, but because each chapter was no longer than five pages, we didn't need it. And it gave him confidence because reading isn't necessarily his thing. And so I'm just telling you, when you wanna give a positive or just a review, an honest review and you try something out for a couple of times or a week and then and you're like, Ugh, I wanna say something nice. Well, I can really say we had it and now we're on lesson 10, right? So you would think that would be two weeks later and we've already had this for, I don't know, I have to check my Instagram. We had it for a month, but because some of the lessons, I want him to go more in depth. So he'll do one of the fun, the one day we'll do one fun worksheet and the next day we'll do the writing assignment and then we'll break it up. Am I trying to finish this by the end of this school year? I wish I could, but I wanna make sure that he's grasping and understanding that this might be a far cry from what we did in the other curricula of BJU. However, the information is still the same and tell me what you can learn from that and then the history and what that means for you today and why it's important that we learn world history because I don't have very good memories of learning world history. I don't have many memories of learning it at all, but I do remember liking Egypt a little bit better in some areas and learning about mummies and he really enjoyed that. He always loves that section and he gets stuck there and I don't wanna just unit study it to pieces. I want him to get a full understanding, but the biblical worldview does not hurt. It is so helpful um, and it ties into our Bible. It ties into just what our faith and what we believe. And these are truths. There are other times I purchased this before I got the, um, this curriculum. And ever since you can see it's still in the bag, I have not used it, but I got this because I know that he's going to go back to school eventually. Right. And this is kind of a secular history book, which has wonderful things, but they match up most of the time it matches up other than the time of other than the millions of years type of theories. But, we haven't had to use this. I'm sad, but at the same time, happy to say that I read through this to try to look, look at the page I turned to, of course, secularism. And I like that I can send him to do research himself so that when he gets out there that he is kind of, I don't know, as Christians, we try to prepare our kids for the world and what worldliness might be or secularism might be to their own faith. But in these books, it's a natural a naturally occurring thing, if that makes any sense. I don't know, I hope I'm not beating the dead horse. Okay, terrible example, but so far in nine lessons over the course of three weeks that we've been using it, maybe four, and I'm not rushing through it, I'm taking our time because I know that I'm gonna use this with my one child who's gonna stay home for school next year and he's gonna be in fourth grade, but I've already had plans of how I'm gonna use it for him and how my son has taken ownership of his own history. And I know I get on here and I say, I'm going to keep it short. And I did, I purposely didn't say that from the beginning because I wanted to give it a thorough look through and, uh, you know, I got to talk about it. Um, but we really love it. This is the one, we changed everything, but this is the one thing that he doesn't mind doing every day. I'm splitting it up to make sure that he's really remembering the things because again, with processing, he'll read something one day and the next day it's like he didn't read it. And so sometimes we're taking two days to do something that was intended to be done one every, a lesson a day. It can, for a neurotypical child, this could be done one lesson a day. You pick one of the things you do, it could be very simple. There are unit tests and there are um, quizzes that you can give him. Um, I haven't used those just yet because we're new to it. I kind of want to ease him into everything one by one. Um, I showed you the booklets, but I didn't go into them in depth. If I'll just give you a little flip through, this is what the map book looks like. Hasn't done a lot of mapping um, in the other curricula that we've chosen previously. So this is just, you can see the directions at the top and then he'll just do that. I'll show you one that he's actually completed. Very simple. It wasn't, a, it's not a lot of coloring, but it's like finding things that correspond with what he just read. Again, for him, it's helpful because he doesn't forget these things. And we read about these in the Bible here with a little bit of coloring that he had to do. But there's never just times where he's just coloring an entire map. I don't, I think only the first day so far where he had to do a world map, which he enjoyed identifying the continents, kind of like a review. Um, I'll go to the back and let you see a little bit when we get into other countries of how much more information is written here versus what you have to do. It's not overwhelming, and that's what I like about it. I know this video is kind of going longer than I expected, but I just wanted you to, to get an idea. We actually don't do the timeline. For some reason, with his, the way that his mind works, putting something on a timeline in chronological order does not help him remember any events. And so I have not made him use this, but again, 
I am planning on using this for the rest of my younger um, child's homeschooling because it's so thorough. And again, I did buy this book. I'm not against using any secular materials. I'm always trying to compare different facts or truths or certain other beliefs with ours. But so far, I'm just loving it. My son is loving it. I did not expect to love it. Again, we're only nine lessons in, but we've been doing it over the course of three weeks, maybe longer, and just breaking down every chapter. It is, you know, one of my favorite things about curriculum is that it's open and go. For a mother of five with five different personalities and a few different learning styles, I need something that just says open it, turn to the first page and go. Like literally, I need that. And this has been such a blessing to us. I am so thankful to Charlene over at Knotgrass for a, for saying yes, considering I don't have this huge following, but I know that all of us have some type of influence. And if you've been looking for a history, that's world history, that is, I would say if I could combine some things, I would. I did not use Story of the World, but for maybe like a couple weeks and I did not love it because of the narrative version. But I would say it is a bite or a taste of Story of the World coupled with the ease of master books with all the knowledge of BJU. I hope that makes sense. So it's like they've taken the best parts of history and meld them together. And we've even used to Becca for history. Becca was really about knowing the facts and not necessarily real life, um, melding those things together. And I didn't think of that before I said it, but that's kind of what this curriculum is for me. It is, I did not love Story of the World and it's great just for multiple, you know, multiple age children. Um, I did not love BJU. I loathe that it, it was more about writing um, vocabulary and just answering lists and lists of fill in the blanks and questions. I did not love that for my neuro, you know, for my child who's not neurotypical. And um, master books, I do really love master books <laughs> materials and they're, it's very succinct and it's very organized and it's open and go. And so I did not look into using master books history before this, but I would say if you could take those three and put them together in one curricula with the gentleness and loveliness and beauty of what Not Grass has provided, that's what you would get. I mean, I wish I would have said that first and then it wouldn't be a 20 minute video, but that's what I would say that these materials have been. If you want to get a little bit closer look, I'm gonna try to do an over the head shot after this, if I get, you know, just respond down below what you guys are using for history, what's been working for you. If you want to see a little bit more up closely, I kind of just showed you the outside of the books because I don't want to do any type of copy, right? Infringement on anything, but it is beautiful. It is lovely. It is open and go. There's so many elements and I wished I would, the only thing I wish I would have ordered it sooner. I wish I would have asked sooner. I wish I would have known about it sooner. And so all of my not grass mamas out there, Yay, we gotta win <laughs> because this has made my life so much easier and stress-free using this and I'm just so thankful for it. I hope you have a blessed rest of your day. Thanks for watching, bye.